Hey, Nikki here with Beauty Shador with my latest pattern, which is Nomi 2052. So this pattern comes with the shirt as well as the pants, but this particular uh, tutorial is for the pants and the shirt pattern tutorial will be probably within the week or so. So a few things about this. Um, I feel that right out of the package, the sizing is really good. Um, the instructions are really good. And I know sometimes that can be an issue, but the instructions are like spot on. Um, and it's just a really, in my opinion, and I know I say this all the time, but it's a really easy make. It's a really easy and seamless make. So what you'll need is pieces 12 through 24, 12 pieces. I know it sounds like a lot, but once you open it up and cut it, I promise you it's not. Um, you're going to need either a chino, a denim, micro suede, stretch woven, or a twill. So these pants were made with uh, a denim with zero stretch, and they're comfortable. Uh, of course, that when you don't have any stretch and the fabric may call for a bit of stretch, you have to allot for, for that sizing as well. But you should be fine. Um, the fabric that I'm using in the tutorial, there's a bit of stretch to it. Um, and I even like them even more. They're a lot more comfortable. Uh, so what else will you need? Da, 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 da. You're gonna need a seven inch zipper and also the rivets. Um, a lot of jeans, they use rivets. For the tutorial, I'm not going to use rivets, but I'll also let you know what you should do when you're not using rivets. Um, also, I am adding six inches. Clearly, I've already like hacked this pattern at least five times. But uh, for this one, I am giving probably around six inches to the length um, because I'm not going to do, if you can see the bottom here, I hope you can see it. Uh, so they're just a crop with kind of like a destroyed look at the bottom and like the loose phrase. I'm not, well, I'm doing it, but not. I'm using a six inch um, extra piece of fabric at the bottom. I'm going to fold it up, but then kind of leave it loose as well. Um, so that's pretty much the only difference and the only change that I've made to the pattern, um, with the exception also of the belt loops. So the belt loops, I think I decreased them by half. Um, and I'll give you the dimensions while I'm doing the tutorial, or you could just do it right out of the box. Out of the box, they're just, you know, they're thicker which is fine. I don't typically wear a belt anyway, and I like them a little thinner, but of course it's your choice, your make. So I think that is about it. Oh yes, this pattern, it comes in size eight to 26, eight to 26. Um, so there's a variety of sizes to choose from. And yeah, so let's go ahead and get started. Okay, so we have all the pattern pieces cut out. Now what we're gonna do is start with the front. And this is uh, piece number, what is this? This is piece number 12. So it's the two front sides. And we're gonna use the pocket facings, which is pattern piece number 13. So what we're gonna do is we're going to right side to right side, we'll line these up, right side to right side on this part. And again, this is where your markings are gonna come in, like really important with all pieces. So we're gonna stitch from here to here, but we're going to reinforce the stitch where the markings are on both sides. Stitch all the way around, but reinforcing the markings, where the markings are. Then you're gonna go ahead and trim this after you stitch it and then press it under. So you're gonna press it under this way. And make sure you press it really well because that's gonna be really important that you don't see the facing on the outside of the pan.
Okay, so we have these stitched, the facing stitched onto the front. Now what we're gonna do is go ahead and trim. I'm gonna use my roller wreath. So I'm just gonna trim this. Gonna do that on both sides. and then go ahead and press these over. Okay, so we have both sides pressed under. And now what we're gonna do is go ahead and top stitch and edge stitch. So you're going to edge stitch as close to the section here, and then you're gonna go ahead and top stitch next to it. Going to do that on both sides. Okay, so you have this top stitch and the edge stitch. Now, what you want to do is grab the side front, and these are pocket. These are pieces number fourteen. And so, what you want to do is you want to turn this over. Then with right sides together. You want to line the pocket, making sure you line up the notches. And then go ahead and pin. And you want to do that on both sides. And now what you're going to do is go ahead and stitch from this part right here all the way around. Okay, so now you have the pockets front connected. And now what you're going to do is go ahead and flip these over. And you're going to base stitch from here down and then from here to here, just using a basting stitch. You're gonna do that on both sides and essentially that's just to allow you to keep this in place. Okay, so we have the side front and the pocket connected and basted. Now what you wanna do is go ahead and put this to the side and you wanna grab piece 20. Um, which will be kind of like the patches that are in the front and there's four pieces of these. So what you want to do is fold this all the way around about a half, well actually a quarter of an inch all the way around and you want to press them and you want to do that for all four pieces. Okay, so we have the patches all folded under. And um, as you can see, I just went ahead and folded the sides and then I folded the bottom and I folded this. And it's, it's pretty neat. Um, they look nice and straight. But if you have a thicker fabric, you might wanna do a miter corner and that's to make sure that the corners are nice and straight. And I have a video um, that I'm gonna provide in the link that will send you to how to do a miter corner. And it's a really quick video um, and it's very helpful, of course, if you have thicker fabric or you're having a hard time getting the corner straight. All right, now what we're gonna do is go ahead and grab the front pieces.
and you're going to place the patches on the front here. So you've already placed the marking. You probably want to just transfer the marking over. I'll just kind of like stick a pin just so I know where I'm placing it. So right here. And then the other corner is going to go right here. So place it right here. And then go ahead and pin. And make sure the pocket is out of the way. And then just go ahead and pin. Then we're going to go ahead and top stitch and edge stitch. So you're going to stitch close to the edge and then a second stitch as a top stitch. You're going to do that um, to both the uh, both sides of the front. Okay, so we have the patches placed. Now what you want to go ahead and do, and I went ahead and pressed it one more time so it's nice and flat. So now we're going to take this, put it to the side. We're going to take the back pieces, which is pattern piece number 17. And along with this, we're going to take piece number 19, which is the back yoke. And we're going to go ahead with right sides together, connect these. So we're going to flip these over. In this, and then we're going to stitch and then press the seam in a downward motion. So the seam should be pressed down in this direction. Once you do that, you're going ahead and going to do the same thing that you've been doing, which is top stitching and edge stitching. So you're going to stitch on the edge and then do a top stitch. You're going to do that to both sides. Okay, so we have the back pieces edge stitched and top stitched. Now what you want to do is go ahead and grab the pocket, the back pocket, which is piece number 18. So we're going to just push this over. What you want to do is fold the sides under about a quarter of an inch. You want to do that all the way around. And making sure when you get to this edge, and as you do this, you want to press it. And you want to make sure that as you're pressing, as you go around, that your corners stay nice and straight. So you want to do that on both pieces of the pocket.
Okay, so we have the pockets folded under. Now what you want to do is you want to take the top of this and fold this over about a fourth of an inch and then press. And you want to do that for both sides. Okay, now we have both sides um, folded under. Now what you want to do is you have this line here, which is the fold line. And you have to make sure that you uh, made this line and transferred it over from the actual pattern. So you want to fold it on this line. And then go ahead and pin. And you want to do that for both sides. Once you do that, go ahead and press it. Then you want the top uh, edge stitch and top stitch on both these sides. Fold it. Mine's a little wonky here. I have to fix the line. Um, but you're going to fold it on the line. Press it, edge stitch, and then top stitch. Okay, so we have both the pockets top stitched. And just as a reference, this uh, third line that we did here, it is going to be 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance. Just so that you know, it, was, it made it really simple actually. All right, now what we're going to do is go ahead and attach back pockets to the back and you should already have your markings so what I'm going to do is just kind of stick the pins here so I know where to place the pocket And they're definitely not directly uh, across from each other, but here we go. All right, so let's go ahead and pin the pocket. Okay, and now what you're going to do is go ahead and edge stitch and then top stitch. You want to do this for both sides. But one more thing, once you get to this corner here, you have the option to use the rivets for the corner pockets. Um, for the corners here, you want to use them, but if you don't want to do that, what you can do, which I'm not going to use any rivets, but what you need to do is reinforce these edges. So you want to pretty much put kind of like a, I'm going to draw on here, but a box in this corner. And you want to reinforce the box several times just to make sure that as you're using your pockets, you don't pull them out. That's only if you're using the rivet, that you're not using the rivet. Okay, so we have the pockets attached, and now what we want to do is go ahead and do the patches. The other two that we made for the back. We want to do it the same way. Find the back here, get the pins, or if you've already marked it on the front then you don't need to do this. What? I'm going to go ahead and pin these. 
And you want to do this for both sides. You want to edge stitch as well as top stitch. Okay, so we have the back patches connected. And now what we want to do is take the front with right sides together. I'm going to match up the sides here. In this. All the way down. And you want to stitch this and you want to do that on both sides okay so we have the front and the back connected now what you want to do is go ahead and press but you want to press your seams toward the back you want to press your seam toward the back and this is also a good time if you're going to serge your edges to do that um, and then go ahead and press toward the back. Once you press toward the back, you're going to top stitch and edge stitch on both the seams, seams on both sides. So press toward the back and then top and edge stitch. Okay, so we have the side seams pressed and top stitched and edge stitched. Now what you want to do is you want to take the crotch here, connect them, making sure you line up the notches here. And we're going to pin this. And now what you're going to do is you're going to stitch. You're going to stitch from this marking here. I just reinforced my marking, um, but again, it's really important that prior to getting started, you make sure all your markings are in place. So you're going to mark from this bottom marking over to the notch. So just from here to here, you're going to stitch. Okay, so we have the crotch stitched, and now what you want to do is on the right side, the right side only, you want to fold this part under, and there's going to be two lines. There's going to be the center seam line, and then this is the right side only fold line. You're going to fold this on the right side only fold. You want to do this, and then go ahead and press this down. Okay, so we have the right side folded over and pressed. And now what we want to do is take your zipper. And you should be using a 7-inch zipper. But if you wanted your zipper to be longer, you'll have to make sure you account for the amount that you want to add and then subtract it from here. So for instance, this is a 7-inch zipper, which is what the pattern calls for. So if you have a 10-inch zipper, you have to make sure you remove 10 inches from the seam, and so the seam would pretty much start down here. So I'm using the seven inch zipper. I'm gonna go ahead and open this. And with the zipper up, you wanna go ahead and place this. And you want the zipper teeth, like right where it lines up 
with the edge without making it too close that so you don't want to have issues with um, zipping up and down your zipper. So let's go ahead. You know what, I'm gonna use my zipper tape. Or you can just use any type of like double-sided tape. So let's go ahead. It just makes it so much easier. So what you're going to do now is you're going to take a zipper presser foot and you're going to stitch as close to the edge here as you can get without going into the actual feet. Okay, so we have this side of the zipper inserted and we have it stitched really close to the zipper feet. And now what you want to do is go ahead and pick up the fly, which is piece number 15. Looks like this. Um, make sure it's already, you already have the interfacing um, pressed in. And you're going to go ahead and with right sides together, you're going to fold this. And you're simply going to stitch around this. I'll move this so you can see it better. So you're going to fold this. The notches are right here. And you're going to stitch along the edge here. Just this bottom edge. Once you do that, go ahead and turn right side out and press. Okay, so we have the fly folded right side out and pressed. Now what you're going to do is you're going to baste stitch from here over. And once you do that, you're then going to attach this to the fly. So you're going to attach this to the side that the zipper is on. You have this notch here. You're gonna line this notch up with the notch that's here on the zipper. Let's go ahead and open this up. You're gonna line it up. Pin it. And then you're going to stitch All the way down making sure you reinforce the stitch at the end okay so we have the fly stitched in now what you want to do is you want to take piece number 16 which is the fly facing and make sure you have the interfacing you have your uh, marks you have your notches make sure everything is on um, and then what you want to do is on the opposite side with right sides together, you want to match these up. And then you want to stitch and you want to stitch 
from the top here down to the marking. Once you do that, you'll go ahead and trim this part, fold it over, and then press. So you're only stitching from here to here, and then trim the edge there. Okay, so we have the fly facing attached. So what you wanna do now is just kind of fold this in and you're gonna lap it over this side here and pretty much just lining this up. And then you're gonna go ahead and pin this And this is going to be kind of thick, so keep that in mind. So once you line this up, you want to then do a base stitch right against this edge here. You're going to base stitch all the layers together. Okay, so we have this base stitched. Now what you wanna do is go ahead and turn this over. And you wanna open, open this up. Go ahead and close the zipper if it's not already. And then you wanna go ahead and stitch the zipper to the fly facing. And you wanna stitch from the top all the way to the end of the facing. Okay, so we have the other side of the zipper connected here to the fly facing. Now let's go ahead and turn this around. So you see here, I went ahead and made the markings for the stitching that's going to go on the outside of the fly you if you haven't already done that go ahead and kind of like reinforce that um, uh, this marking just so that you know and you have a guide in terms of where you're going to put the stitching and this is like super important especially if you're using a uh, different color thread um, that just is really going to stick out. I'm using kind of the same color thread as for the jeans. So if there's any like imperfections, it won't stick out. But if you're using like maybe a brown or a tan or, you know, a lighter color, it's definitely going to stick out. So just make sure you do this part properly. So what you're going to do now is, so it's going to kind of like fold over this way. You're going to push this out of the way and you can pin it or kind of use a clip for it because it's pretty thick. And you're gonna lay this part down. I use the tape here so I can remove the tape. Um, it'll wash out when I wash it, but. Okay, so you wanna lay this part down and you wanna go ahead and Stitch. You want to stitch this part to this. So you're going to do one stitch line here and you're going to stop right here. And you want to make sure the zipper on the other side is completely out of the way. So you're going to go from here to here and then you're going to do another line of stitching next to it, stopping at the same place. Okay, so we have the stitching that's on the outside here. It's really light, again, because I use the same color thread. But of course, if you're using a contrasting thread, then you'll be able to see this really clearly. So what you wanna do now is just kind of turn this over 
And then you want to hand tack this piece here to this piece. So I'm just gonna, I mean, you don't need to pin it, but I'm just gonna do that just for demonstration purposes. So literally just right here at the bottom, you're gonna hand tack this. Okay, so we have the hand tacked part right here. And now this would be a good time to trim your zipper. Um, I used a metal zipper and so I'm not gonna trim it, uh, but this is a good time that you would do that. So let's go ahead and turn this over. And you can also do kind of like a, just a little tack right here. And again, I can't do it because I used this metal zipper and the zipper goes all the way down. The metal part goes all the way down. So this isn't a traditional zipper. The traditional zipper, even if it's metal, will have that extra tape that's at the bottom. The zipper does not, so I can't do that. Um, so now what you wanna do is go ahead and remove the base stitching that you put in right here. And after you do that, go ahead and match up the raw edges here and continue to stitch and close that up. Okay, so we have the zipper installed. Now what you wanna do is put the back seam together making sure you match up the notches. And you most importantly want to match up these back seams. And then you want to stitch down the back. And once you do that, you wanna go ahead with the seams together, you wanna to press out to the left. So press everything over to the left. Okay, so we have the back seam um, stitched and pressed. Now what you wanna do is top stitch um, and edge stitch right down the back. Okay, so we have the back edge stitch and top stitch. Now what we wanna do is go ahead and turn this inside out and stitch the inseam. So go ahead and pin these. going to stitch this all the way around and then press the seam toward the back of the jean. Okay, so we have the inseam stitched and pressed. Now what we want to do is work on the carriers. So I changed the size of my carriers because the pattern comes with carriers that are a bit thicker, um, which is fine. And I did uh, the original with the larger carriers, but I just wanted to do this one with smaller carriers because I did do them um, for a couple of hacks that I did for this pattern and uh, with, the smaller with the smaller carriers. And it just, I don't know, I liked it a lot better. So I did cut this in half and I'll measure this so that you can see what it is. 
but these are oh, what's right here? Uh, four by two. So these are, and this is a little uneven, but yeah, they're four by two inches and you're gonna cut five of them. But um, of course the piece that comes out of the package is uh, a bit bigger than this, but the whole process is gonna be the same. So what we're gonna do is fold this in half. And then we're going to open it back up. So you can fold it and press it. It'll give it a better, um, kind of like a better seam on here. But then we're gonna turn one part in and it's gonna meet with the fold. And then we're gonna turn this other part in. And it's gonna meet up. And then you're gonna fold this. And then press it. And then what you're gonna do is you're going to stitch right here on this edge, right on this edge. And then you're going to go ahead and stitch directly as close as you can on this other edge. So you're going to do that to all five carriers. Okay, so we have the carriers all constructed, all five of them. So we're gonna go ahead and place them. The markings for the carriers, of course, are inside, and we already marked those. So we just want to take the carriers and pin them. Let me grab my pins. And we wanna pin them on the outside. Um, okay, so what we're going to do is go ahead and baste stitch all of these carriers on. Okay, so I have the carriers connected. And now what we're going to do is take the waistband. And we're going to take here. This is the back. And I've already um, added the interfacing to the three pieces of the waistband. And this is the, what is this, the left side or the right side? All right, this is the left and yeah, the right. So we're gonna go ahead and pin this together. And just for clarification, this piece here is going to be the back waistband and uh, where the button is going to be is going to be the left and the other one is going to be the right. And just make sure that when you cut this that you're going to be cutting all the notches. That way it's kind of like a no-brainer when you put it together. And then we're going to stitch this up. And once you do that, go ahead and press the seam allowance open. Okay, 
So we have the waistband connected um, and the facing, of course, is on here. So let's go ahead and turn the pants inside out. and matching notches. Let's go ahead and pin. Where's the pins? Let's go ahead and pin this all the way around. Okay, now what you want to do is go ahead and stitch all the way around and then press in an upward motion. Okay, so we have the uh, waistband attached and we have it nicely pressed. Now what we want to do is take the other part of the waistband and do the exact same thing that we just did um, with this one. We're gonna go ahead and pin this. Then we're gonna go ahead and stitch this and then press the seam allowance open. Okay, so we have the waistband connected. Now what you wanna do is go ahead and fold this under a quarter of an inch. So once you fold it under a quarter of an inch, go ahead and uh, go ahead and iron it. Okay, so we have the waistband um, folded under and pressed. Now what we're going to do is go ahead and connect it. We're going to go ahead and line this up. And as you're going around, you want to make sure this uh, the belt loops, the carriers are positioned and they're straight. Just make sure they're in an upright position. Okay, so we have it pinned. And now what you wanna do is, you wanna make sure that the carriers are as tight or loose as you want them. You don't want them to, to be too tight um, because it'll kind of like buckle. So you wanna kind of push it in just a bit to give it a little bit of slack. So I'm doing mine about here. And then we're gonna go ahead and pin this. And we're gonna do this as we go around just to give it a bit of slack. And not too much because if you give it too much, then it'll kind of poke out and you don't want that either.
Okay, now let's go ahead and stitch all the way around. And then before you trim this, I want you to kind of see, put the jeans on and see how the carriers feel and how they look. Um, that way um, you want to make any adjustments prior to cutting it because once you cut it, you know, you're kind of stuck with how the carriers will be. So after you stitch this, then go ahead and try them on. If you're happy with that, then go ahead and trim the tips of the carriers off and then go ahead and press in an upward position. Okay, so I failed to mention, um, in addition to pinning this and stitching this, you also need to stitch here, right across the front on both sides. And once you do that, just go ahead and turn um, right side out. Okay, so we have the waistband connected. Now what we wanna do is go ahead and trim Okay, now what we want to do is go ahead and turn this out. You want to turn all of this out and then go ahead and press really well all the way around. Okay, so we have the waistband pressed. Now what you wanna do is go ahead and open this up. And you want to understitch. So that is stitching. So that you're stitching and then the stitching will show up on the inside, not the outside. So you're gonna be stitching on this end all the way around. And once you do that, go ahead and press again. Now remember, the Stitching should be stitched here so that it's showing up on the inside and not the outside of the garment. Okay, so we have it understitched. Now what you wanna do is you wanna take the bottom where it's already folded under, put it here, and you want to pin all the way around. You want to pin it all the way around and then what you want to do is you want to stitch, but you want to kind of pull this back and you want to stitch within this little ditch right here all the way around. And what's going to happen is you're going to grab this at the very bottom and stitch it all the way around. Okay, so we have the waistband finished. Now what we want to do is go ahead and add the buttons. Uh, so the pattern calls for one button, but um, I'm going to add two for this one uh, just because it's a pretty wide waistband. I think it lays better with two buttons, but it's definitely your choice. Um, but we'll go ahead add the buttons and be right back. Okay, so we have the buttons added. Now what we need to do is work on the bottom. So remember before when I said I added uh, six inches and I added six, six inches so that I could um, cuff it up. Um, if you didn't add six inches, um, of course, you probably didn't, but that, that's fine. So what you have to do now with the hem is right along this edge, probably about, let's see, let's measure it, probably a quarter of an inch. You wanna go about a quarter of an inch up and stitch all the way around. After you stitch that, then you wanna take, and you probably need to take a seam ripper Grab 
you want to take a seam ripper and then you can pull out the threads as you go around. and it begins to come out. I don't like mine so uniform, so what I typically do is instead of going through that process, I just kind of pull mine as I go around, and I do like the like strings hanging off. Um, I don't want it to look like so neat, so what I'll do is I'll just throw these in the wash, um, and then it gives you kind of a more like lived in look as opposed to it looking so perfect. Um, but that is it. Um, again, uh, the length is your option and you always have to look at patterns as kind of like a blueprint and you pretty much do whatever you want to them. Um, so yes, if you have any questions, any comments, I'd love to hear your thoughts. Thank you so much.